Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to be doing a comparison between two Kuat uh, two bike tray racks. And if you haven't seen it already, uh, I did a comparison video a couple years ago between the NV 2.0 and the Thule T2 Pro. And so today we're going to be covering two Kuat racks back to back instead. This is the Piston Pro X. This is Kuat's uh, highest end rack. It's their newest rack on the market. We've had it for about eight months or so. We had it for the full summer season. Um, and Allie got a chance to do a whole bunch of uh, testing with it. So she's gonna talk a little bit about what she liked and didn't like about it. Before we get into that, we're gonna cover just some of the basics. We're gonna start with uh, probably the most important part, which is what is the price of these two racks? So the NV 2.0 comes in at a retail of $849 and the Piston Pro X is $1349. So this rack is an additional $540 on top of what was already previously their highest end rack and a pretty expensive bike rack. So what we're gonna do today is try to figure out, is it worth the money? We'll cover some of the basics. You can make the best decision possible. So let's begin with spec. When we're looking at the NV 2.0, the rack itself is 56 pounds. Pro X, this is 63 pounds, so it's seven pounds heavier. The capacity for bikes, we have 60 pound capacity here, and that's on a two bike with a two inch receiver. This steps up to 67 pounds each. When we go to a four bike, this is worth mentioning, we can add on a two bike extension to the NV. That drops down to 40 pounds per bike. And it's actually the exact same here. So even though this had a higher capacity for two bike, once you get it out to four, it's still 40 pounds for every bike. You can get a single bike extension, then all three of those bikes can be 50 pounds. Again, that's with the two inch receiver on them, which is actually the only way you can do extensions. If you get the one and a quarter, you cannot add on, I believe, to either one of these. Okay, then we're gonna talk about wheelbase. So how big of a bike can you get on here? The max wheelbase on the NV 2.0 is 50 inches, which is 1,270 millimeters. We'll put my bike on here later, but that's like exactly what my bike's wheelbase is. The Piston Pro X steps up. Here we've got a 53 inch max wheelbase. That's 1,346 millimeters. So three inches longer wheelbase or 76 millimeters longer. When it comes to tire width, so if you wanna get a fat bike on these um, with this rack, you can run a five inch tire, but you need to get a fat bike accessory that they make for it. With this rack, you can run a five inch tire without having to do anything. Then the last one I wanted to cover is wheel diameter. So what size wheels can you fit on here? On the Envy, you can run a 20 up to a 29 inch, but you have to have an accessory once you get between 20 and 24 inches. A wheel adapter, they call it, that lets those smaller wheels fit on there. The piston goes from 18 up to 29 inches, so it goes even lower and it doesn't need any adapter. It can just fit those as is. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the kind of pros and cons that are present in both of these. We'll start with the Envy again. So with this one, one of the pros is that it has this trail dock system. It's basically a bike rack that's built into this thing. So this opens. You can loosen this from the back so you can have it actually be this way or this way and then tighten that up, click that in, finish it off by snugging it down and then you've got basically a little work stand. It works decent but a lot of times the pedals do kind of strike against this part of the rack but if you're just doing some basic stuff you need your bike up off the ground it does work nicely um, you do need to be a little careful i've heard about people stealing these because um, you can just take this thing all the way out if you're leaving it somewhere where you're worried about that you might want to just take the thing off and not have it be on there at all it has integrated cable locks so on this rack the cable lock is already in there and it's magnetic 
So once you get it all the way in, kind of holds itself in there. Another pro for the Envy is it has two color options. So this one's gray and orange, and they also make one that's gray and black. With the piston, this is the only colorway option. It's basically just like a neutral gray. Okay, so then let's talk about some of the piston features. You have no wheel touch at all. So neither one of these has any frame touch. But with the NV, you do touch the wheel. So the front part goes on the tire, but the back strap does go around the wheel of the bike. Now it's better than the Thule because it's not just plastic. They put a nice rubber backing to it. Um, but especially if you have carbon wheels and they're all covered in dirt, it can definitely leave like little rubbies on there. Whereas with this rack, it's not touching the wheel at all. Both of these are just locking in and touching the tires. This is also 99% um, metal. So there's almost no plastic anywhere on this rack. So that's super nice. There's not a lot of plastic over there, but like those straps are plastic. You've got Kashima coated struts. And so those are uh, kind of blingy and cool, but they're also very durable. And you also have a no fade powder coat. I remember talking to the rep about this and he was just talking about how extremely strong uh, and durable the powder coating is on this. You also have lights. So that's a big one. You actually have lights. And so we'll show that in a little bit here. You also have tiered trays on this. And so if you look closely, this back tray is actually higher than this front tray. And I think the primary purpose of that is for road clearance. So if you have it on a lower vehicle and you go up a steep hill, the back of these will sometimes scrape. And by having that tiered, that's gonna get it away from there a little bit. It probably helps a little bit with bike to bike contact. The piston, this is a big one for some people. This is RV compatible. So this rack uh, has been rated to be on the back of a motorhome because uh, there's a lot more shaking that goes on back there. So they have to be pretty durable. The NV 2.0 is not motorhome compatible. So it does not have that rating. With this setup, two bikes, with the two inch, 42 pound capacity if you're putting it on an RV. So it's significantly lower because of that shaking that does go on. Let's look at the hitch locks. So this is the lock that comes on the piston. And this is the lock that comes with the NV 2.0. I mean, you can see that the head on this thing is way heavier duty. This is also stainless steel. And I'm pretty sure this is not. And then as far as the cable lock goes, this is a much thicker lock. I think it's 12 millimeters. You know, we talked about this integrated lock. You can see that it's definitely not as thick. And it is worth pointing out though, that this is not integrated. And so you do have to kind of keep track of this thing. It's, they call it semi-integrated because it does have a spot here on top that it locks into. So it's loose, that has some pros and some cons that Allie's gonna get into. They both have e-bike compatibility. So you can actually put an e-bike ramp on here to help you roll a heavy bike up onto it. One other feature about the Pro X, and this has to do with the e-bike the e ramp. Once it's in this upward position, you can actually slide it down and put it down out of the way like this. And then the e-ramp will hook onto here. And this actually has another nice advantage. If you've got two bikes on here and you wanna get this back bike off, you can just put this down and take that bike off this way instead of having to remove bike number two to get bike number one. If you want to adjust the size for the wheel, you just pinch these two and all it's doing, there's just a little pin and it shows you what size wheel. And then you just drop it in there and you're good to go. These do install in different ways. They both slide into the hitch. They both have that locking hitch pin that prevents them from being stolen. But when it comes to tightening them up, it is different. Um, with this one, you've got, it's actually kind of a built-in tool. It's, it sits in there magnetically, um, but they do recommend locking it for road travel because they talked about how occasionally you'll get a road bump that can knock this thing loose and then you'll lose that tool. Whenever you're tightening these things, you wanna be wiggling the rack as you tighten because that'll help it seat into the corner of the hitch. Uh, NV 2.0 is different. It slides in and then you're gonna use this knob to tighten it up. They're both available in both a two inch and a 1.25 inch receiver. 
If you're having the option and you're putting a receiver on your vehicle, definitely put a two inch would be my recommendation because it's much uh, beefier and you get a lot less wiggle in your rack. One other thing to talk about, and I got a lot of questions on this because I forgot to cover it in my first video, is whether you could put the tailgate down. With the NV 2.0, you cannot put the tailgate down for sure. It definitely always hits. With this one, if you try to put it down like this, it hits for sure. If you try to lower these, which by the way, you can lower these with bikes on them if you haven't seen that. So that's another nice feature about tray racks. You can get them out of the way of a gate without having to actually remove the bikes. Tailgate still hits, but we did find that if you open these with it down, it doesn't hit. It's super close. It looks like it is, but it's actually not hitting. Now, if you try to do it with it up, then it will hit again and it's close, but you can tell because this is a little bit loose. All right, it's starting to get a little bit dark out here. So we're gonna flip the script here and have Allie take over. And we're also gonna show you what the lights look like. Now we're here with Allie, who, like I said at the beginning, is the one who's been using these racks the most. I've been pretty much uh, doing nothing but whitewater kayaking. And she has continued to do a lot more mountain biking. And she's also been doing coaching in mountain biking. So that's super cool. Allie, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Um, so tell us a little bit about installing these racks. What have you found as far as putting the two on the vehicles? I'd say they're pretty similar in terms of getting them in the hitch. Um, even though this one is heavier, um, it's narrower. When it's all closed up, it's narrower from like this side to this side. So it makes it a little more, more manageable and balanced when you're holding it and trying to get it into the hitch. Um, I like the way that this one tightens up using the, the tool because I feel like it's easier to tighten. That one I feel like I'm cranking, cranking with my hand and can't, I have small hands, so it can't, I never feel like I can get it tight enough. I see they're both relatively easy to put bikes onto. This one is much easier. Uh, what I like about this is you can just hold your bike in the middle and lift, like push this in, push this in and it's uh. on. So this one, you have to be more cautious about holding it, kind of lean down, get it in just right, okay. and then come in the back to do the back wheel. It's okay. not hard, but that is a little just bit trickier. cushy, easy okay. to do. So one thing I'm always paranoid about is I load my bike up, I hop in the car and I get ready to leave, and then I think, oh no, did I do the back ratchet over the wheel, which is important because if you go over a bump and your wheel jumps off the tray, especially with this one, this tray has no real well to it. It's pretty mm, flat. Yeah. So I would always get worried that I forgot that part and have to stop and hop out and get out of the car and check. I've never forgotten it, but um, this one, you can see in your rearview mirror if it's on there fully, like you can't forget a part on this. It's either on or it's not. One thing that they said was cool is that it only takes one click of engagement on your wheel to be stable. It might rock back and forth, but it can't come off. I always do it as many as I can get. Okay. But what about um, the stability of the bikes? Ooh. County. County. <laughs> He's mad right now. <laughs> he wants us to go inside and sit on the couch. I think they both ride similarly. I wouldn't say one is more stable than the other. They both seem, I've never had any issues if they're mounted correctly. The bikes don't wiggle around, they're fine. Okay, well, one advantage of the piston is, like you said earlier, that it only bites onto your tire. It doesn't touch your frame or your wheel. And so here you can see an indent in the rubber. Rubber, this is the MV 2.0, um, because I get it pretty close to my fork to tighten it up. And so over time it's kind of pressed in and you can actually see a mark on my bike too from where it's been rubbing okay. all the time. Yeah, that's interesting. I remember when the rep um, was in talking to us about these, he specifically pointed out that they made this rubber uh, soft so that it would intentionally kind of wear away instead of causing damage to the bike. 
Do you think it's damaged yours or just kind of left a mark? It's just left a little rub. And you can be intentional about setting it out a little bit more, okay. but I always, I'm just paranoid and I want it to be as tight on there as possible, so. Let's uh, mm. talk a little bit about the this bike lock. I think that some people might not like how it can completely be separate from the rack, but I, after using it, I have really liked it primarily because it's really bulky and it feels secure, but also um, it makes it a lot easier, especially if you have two bikes on here. You can weave it, it's pretty long, so you can weave it through how you want it on your bikes, and then you just click it in. Whereas with the MV 2.0, you have to take one out, put it on a bike, then come over and take another one out, put it on your bike. Um, and this gives you a lot more flexibility for how you're gonna okay. um, lock it up. All right, quick follow up on two points that I forgot to cover. One is that this tool is not just a standard Allen. So if we look at it, you can see it's actually hollow. And what that means is someone with a standard Allen would not be able to remove this. And that means you really have double security on this. You've got the hitch pin in there. And then where with the NV, you've just got a knob that you could turn by hand. With this, you have to have a special tool to loosen it up as well. And the second thing to talk about is these cable locks. So we talked about how this one was a little thicker than the NV, but it's important to remember that it's still a cable lock. This is not super secure. Anytime you're somewhere sketchy, you're gonna leave them unattended for a while. You're gonna need something more along the lines of this. So this is a heavy chain lock. That's the way to go. Do not trust uh, a standard cable lock really for much of anything except to just prevent someone from being able to walk away with your bike. Oh, and while you're looking up close, this is nice that it has this really nice lock oh, cover. Yeah. This had a little rubber thing that broke in. I don't know where it is. Okay. <laughs> Allie's gonna show my bike being put on both these racks just so we have an example. She actually sent her suspension in to Fox today, <laughs> shipped it off today, um, so we've only got the one mountain bike here, but this will give you a general idea about how these work. So you've got a bit of a wheel tray, and that wheel tray, we didn't talk about this, but that's actually adjustable, and it changes the ability to put longer bikes on there, so you can extend them. They've, they've got three settings, and by tipping it down, you actually increase the ability to put a long bike on there. So I had mentioned that my bike is a 50 inch wheelbase and you can see that's about how it looks. So it's getting back towards the end. You could technically go a little bit longer. Um, these, they just slide. So a shorter bike, they just slide on this track. And then here's what we were talking about where you can start to get some rub. You can see where it's rubbing here on the right. cable mount. So this is just so easy. You just come and pop them open. All it has to have is one click to be engaged and it won't fall down. It doesn't make it super sturdy, but these are not gonna fall down. Yeah, I kind of go back and forth okay. and do a click or two, so that's pretty even. If you like to have it facing that direction, then you can turn it around and face that direction, whereas on the MV 2.0, you have to have it one way or the other. So then to get it down, you just pop it open and pull it out. Allie's going to show us here the brake lights and the blinkers. And then I'll go ahead and put the tray up. And we didn't talk about this lever, but you can use this. You pull it back and then you can put the tray up. And when the tray is up, you can either push on this or put your foot on this to get it down. That's actually the same on both of these racks. And then when it's up, you can see that that same light is now shining nicely. So in this case, it doesn't make a huge difference because the it doesn't get in the way of the trucks, but you could have it on a vehicle where your lights are kind of in the way. And if you do the extensions, putting it up to three or a four bike, they still have the lights on them. So that's pretty cool. And it's also um, really easy to set this up. They provided little magnets and so they can just clip on. Uh, this is actually magnetic as well. So it just pops in there 
and then that just goes into a four prong. So yeah, super easy. It's a pretty nice feature. That's kind of all that came to mind. I'm sure we're missing something. People can throw stuff in the comments, mm -hmm. but I hope that helps everybody out for trying to make a decision if you're looking at these two racks, particularly the Piston Pro X, since it is a pretty big chunk of change. It does have a, a lot of very nice features. That being said, I think the Envy is still a super solid rack. We've been using an Envy 2.0 for, I'd say probably like two or three years now and it's served us very well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. That definitely helps other people see it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. Please throw your comments down below. We like to have good dialogue about all this and it gives ideas for uh, making videos in the future. All right, thanks everybody. Are you so hungry? Oh my goodness. Are you upset? Wow.